sit here today to reflect on the adjusted budget of the Department of Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development and its impact on the delivery of service. In February 2020, when the president tabled the State of the Nation address and presented what government will do in this financial year, followed by the presentation of the budget, no one would have known that the disruption caused by COVID-19 pandemic would be of such proportion across the whole society. As we continue to go about our responsibilities, we cannot forget to remember those who have departed and those who have been affected and by the impact on the delivery of service. May their soul in February 2020 when the and may those who are infected and affected and presented what government do in this financial year, followed by the presentation what emerged as a health pandemic no has one had an impact in people's lives and the functionality the of the economy of across the globe. Across the the responses by a number of countries in containing the diseases resulted in countries insulating themselves those who have become <laughs> As well as ensuring that they put the lockdown measures. Um, and may these interventions also create the space for countries to develop strategies for how they will manage the disease. These interventions have had unintended impact for the economy and the people's life. In essence, this is a road less travel when no one had experienced as the spread and gulf all of us and more. Or less the same time. In our own country, we declared the national state of disaster that restricted the movement of people and curtailed economic and social activity. Our government ensured that the farm sector remains open for to ensure accessibility of food in our country as well as the region. We wish to thank the farmers and farm workers who selflessly continue to work during this period in order to save most of our people. We cannot forget those farm workers who lost their lives at the early stage of the lockdown as they went to work in a car accident. We are aware of some farm workers and farmers who have also been affected by the pandemic and to them we extend our support. We also want to appreciate those farmers and agribusiness industries that contributed food parcels to those who have been affected. There are challenges given the intricate linkages that agriculture has with other critical sectors of our economy. A majority of our farmers market is domestic. The closure of some of the sectors of our economy to this date means a loss of market and threat to job and tenure security for our farm workers. As the Department of Agriculture, Land and Rural Development, COVID-19 became an added blow given the challenges that we're already facing in respect of droughts, animal and plant diseases outbreaks. In the previous month, we've seen the impact of COVID-19 to food security in our own country, in the continent and globally. In our own country, it has shown the fault lines that still exist in our agricultural sector and food system. As <clears throat> We made interventions to cushion smallholder and commercial farmers from the disruption caused by COVID-19. Smallholder and subsistence farmers were assisted through production inputs, animal feed, agricultural remedies, and livestock remedies through the voucher system. The large number of applicants received was an indication of the high demand for financial assistance by our farmers and also highlighted the limited resources that are available to service this demand. The 100 million set aside for commercial farmers who actually have got loans with the land bank were affected by the challenges at the land bank. But we are grateful that the amount and the injection that has been put on the land bank will assist us to actually turn the tide. I wish to assure the members in this house and commercial farmers funded by the land bank that this matter is being resolved and they will be advised on how to apply for this intervention. Chairperson, during this year, we as the department have committed ourselves to accelerate effective land reform in our country. This commitment is underpinned by the following approach, rapid release of state land, acceleration and resolution of the older claims, and short compliance with the court order in respect of labor tenants, development of communal tenure legislation, post-settlement support to those 
to receive land through land reform, strengthening land administration system, focusing on youth and women, improve market access and prioritize the implementation of the Africa continental free trade area and strengthening governance and proper management of public resources. The advent of COVID-19 has also compelled our country to rethink and readjust budget allocation for competing needs during this period. The initial allocation for department as per the February 2020 budget vote by the Minister of Finance was 16.8 billion. This budget was readjusted to 14.4 billion during the supplementary budget on 24 June 2020, a reduction of just under 2.4 billion. We're appreciative that these cuts did not affect critical medium term allocations for biosecurity and supporting export amounting to 495 million and about 500 million to finalize our land claims. Furthermore, these cuts were not extended to the Agricultural Research Council, which was already experiencing cash flow challenges. Chairperson, the 14.4 billion allocation for 2020-21 budget for the department also includes transfers to provincial departments of agriculture as per the division of revenue. These allocations relate to Illimalitima conditional grants, comprehensive agricultural support in terms of infrastructure, as well as the upgrading of colleges and the extension services. The other transfers are to our agricultural entities such as Agricultural Research, National Marketing Council, as well as the Igonyama Trust. The impact of the budget cuts, I must say, Chairperson, means that we have to deal with very difficult trade-offs in our effort to, as far as possible, have minimal negative impact on the delivery of services within the sector. The greatest portion of the cuts of 1.89 billion within the department affected the programs that deliver on food security, land redistribution and restitution. These programs are at the core for achieving outcomes in food security and achieving transformation priority through redress and equitable access to producer support. Food security had cuts of nine 139 million, land redistribution and tenure reform 544 million, and land restitution 403 million. The food security program in our budget comprised of the transfer allocations from the National Department as covered by the Division of Revenue Act. That will be the Ili Malitzima and the Comprehensive Agricultural Support Program. These budget adjustments will therefore mean provinces will receive lesser allocations for producer support for production and infrastructure. Provinces will therefore need to prioritize projects for this financial year. In terms of land redistribution and tenure reform, the land development support um, was scaled down and this support will be extended to the identified 146 uh, projects within the proactive land acquisition strategy. The other applicants relating to land support will only be considered in the next financial year of 2021-2022. Relating to land acquisition, <coughs> projects will not be considered and no new valuations will be conducted on land for proactive land acquisition. However, we will ensure that valuations that relate to restitution will actually go ahead. The current funding will only cater for current uh, commitments in respect of the land that has already been acquired. Our rural development budget also has been cut with 199.7 million, and this will negatively affect rural social infrastructure, which includes the revitalization of irrigation schemes. This coupled with the cuts in cast infrastructure allocation will lead to delayed implementation of on-farm infrastructure projects. The focus for this financial year will be on the completion of multi-year well, infrastructure I mean, projects and those that started in 2019. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I will actually complete when I respond. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker 
from the ANC is the Honorable ZMD Mandela. The Honorable Thank Mandela. You. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister and Deputy Ministers, Honorable Members. We bring you greetings and felicitations in this difficult and uncertain times. I dedicate this speech to my grandmother, Anna Hadikainyana Musete, and my aunt Zinziswa Mande. Our thoughts reach out to all who have lost loved ones in this time, and our prayers are with those who are ill and battling COVID-19 and other illnesses that impair their well-being. As a nation, we have had to take extraordinary measures to combat the horrid impact that this global pandemic has had on every facet of life as we know it. The cuts to this budget is reflective of these austerity measures and intended to prioritize spending and refocus actions under extremely difficult circumstances. We are cognizant of the enormity of the challenge that we confront, but we are emboldened by the words of President Nelson Holika Mande when he said in 1953, and I quote, there is no easy walk to freedom anywhere and many of us will have to pass through the valley of the shadow of death again and again before we reach the mountain tops of our desires, close quote. Honorable Chairperson, following the tabling of the special adjustment budget by the Honorable Minister of Finance, Tito Mboweni, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development subsequently had to revise its budget and it has not been an easy task given the prevailing circumstances. The department's mm -hmm. budget allocation has been cut from 16.8 billion rands to 14.4 billion rands. In his State of the Nation's address, President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa affirmed that agriculture was one of the sectors that could play a large role in job creation and confirmed that government will release about 700,000 hectares of state land for agricultural production this year and made emphasis on key priorities of government with regards to land reform and rural development. These agricultural and land reform sector related announcements have not significantly changed as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. In this financial year, the department will be settling a number of outstanding land claims, including labor tenant claims. The office of the special master has been established to deal with the labor tenants claims, and this is a welcome progress. And we are hoping that this will end all kinds of injustices, humiliation, pain, and suffering of the farm dwellers. Honorable Chairperson, one of the priorities of government is to build an ethical, honest, and capable state, developmental state, and human resources, thus become very critical in this endeavor. The inability of the department to fill critical vacancies will impede on critical areas of operations within the department in the year under review. We are encouraged though by the confidence that government has in the agricultural sector to transform the ownership patterns of our economy. The support and inclusion of small and emerging black farmers into the mainstream agricultural economy, including its related value chain is an essential ingredient towards radical economic transformation of the sector. This vote will contribute towards ensuring increased participation. It is important, Honorable uh, Chairperson, to ensure increased investments to rural infrastructure support programs 
that will support former production units located in the 44 districts of our country. Equally, we need investment in social infrastructure, such as rural roads, and this will contribute to the effective realization of urban rural market linkages and thus yield positive economic spin-offs for our rural agricultural communities. The government's land reform policy, as outlined in the 2019 election manifesto of the African National Congress, is about redressing historical injustices and the dispossession of black majority. Our approach takes into consideration the stability of the productive assets of our economy. Honorable Chairperson, as a result of these cuts, one of the most important programs of the department, food security, has been negatively impacted. We reiterate our call to farmers, farm workers, and traditional leaders to work together to expand food production and ensure food security. The legacy of apartheid special development planning continues to haunt us to this very day. Our people live in very crowded spaces with little exposure to sustainable economic activity. The release of state-owned land for human settlement as well as for agricultural development must be prioritized. The land restitution program has lost about 400 million rands of its initial budget and will require revision of planned targets for the year. The department has a number of entities reporting under it. The committee has raised its concerns and we are satisfied with the progress being undertaken by the department in ensuring full compliance by the Ingonyama Transport. The National Agricultural Marketing Council, NEMEC, remains critical in the development of market access to smallholder producers and Agricultural Research Council is working on innovative and smart agricultural technologies that will enhance the productivity and the competitiveness of our farmers. To enhance the work done by the deeds trading account and additional 150 million rands has been transferred to accounts in order to transform the deeds registry to record land rights in the country. In conclusion, Honorable Chairperson, we acknowledge the reduction of the food security budget and across programs, the suspension or revision of core service delivery targets when agriculture is considered an essential service remains a concern as it is going to have a negative impact on the sustainability of subsistence and smallholder farmers who are dependent on government support as well as household food insecurity. We have as a, as a committee raised concerns and we are content with the response. We support the adoption of the Adjustment Budget Vote 29. I thank you. The next speaker is from the GA, the Honorable Spain. Good afternoon, uh, House Chairperson. Failure to furnish reasons, failures to act rationally, failure to act reasonably, failure to hear an affected person. The words used by Judge Davis after the court ordered the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform to sell the land to Mr. David Rahasi. This after a 17-year battle with the state where the state one-sidedly decided to change the lease contract from option to purchase to lease agreement without option to purchase. This paternalistic relationship of keeping farmers dependent on the state is a story of many black South African farmers. In fact, 
Mr. Ahasi believes that the department is actively sabotaging black farmers. If this is true, why do we not see many more farmers standing up against the department? But let me tell you about another farmer, Mr. Vuhani Zigana from Kokstad. He was appointed as caretaker of the farm Groove Park in 2012. Suddenly, after five years on the farm, he received a call from an official to inform him that he must now apply for a lease agreement on the farm. Nothing wrong with that. But the farm was already earmarked for someone else, apparently a friend of said official. This after Mr. Zigana has put blood and sweat on the farm, plowing back the little income to upgrade the infrastructure and to try and make a living. But it did not end there. In December last year, the department sent the you to confiscate Mr. Zigana's animals and charging him with trespassing. He tried his best, right? phone to the department, but the only answer he got was it, that he's now stepping on the uh, toes of the official and that these officials have the power to remove anyone. This case went to court, but the department keep on missing court dates and so delaying the case and hoping Mr. Zigana would run out of money and patience. But still, it doesn't end there. The people of Guatu has been struggling to acquire security of tenure on the land they have toiled on for generations. First under the Transkai Bantustan authorities and now under the ANC government, under the stewardship of the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform. During 2016, the minister, Minister Quinty, promised to register the CPA after the community has been struggling to legally get registered since 2014. After many commissions and report, this has not happened and all kinds of manure gets dished up when we ask questions about this. This is the department that is tasked to ensure redress of land reform. But if you look at the number of court cases that the department lose, it is clear that the purpose of the department is to ignore current legislation and to ensure that the connected cadres eats at the trough. A lot of time and noise is made about the constraints of the constitution, but very little is said or done about corruption and the total disregard of current legislation. The situation holds true for the agriculture side of the department also. It was made clear during the recent allocation of the so-called COVID agricultural support that the goalposts keep on moving and qualification requirements are changed, making it very difficult to hold the department to account. Minister De Diza promised to give full details of the lucky few who received the 1.3 billion rand COVID assistance, but very little information has been provided up to date. A presentation in Northwest legislature showed that 55 government officials were under the beneficiaries in Northwest. No surprises at all. Chairperson, I asked the minister to provide the full details of all the beneficiaries of this support package. The details must be of such a nature that we could visit the farms and see for ourselves what the support were and who were benefiting. With a budget cut of 1.9 billion rand for the program dealing with food production, we must ensure that every cent counts. Lastly, I must it must be my years of dealing with fabricated stories from this department. But when the minister appoints an advisor who has been the chief director of legal services, when we have seen a swimming pool being staged as a fire pool, I must wonder what more needs cover up in this department. The, the Democratic Alliance dank all the boeren and workers for all the work on the cost Ons hoop ook dat die alcohol en tabakbedrijven baie gauw weer in bedrijf kan kom. Baie dankie, voorzitter. The next speaker is from the EFF, the Honorable Matthias. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, that... Uh, Tombella and all the uh, members of the EFF, the convener of the Economic Cluster, Commissar Kenjum Kalipi, and the National Chairperson, Commissar Veronica Mende. 
chapters and the COVID-19 pandemic, tragic as it is, offers us as a rare opportunity to restructure the whole nature of land holding, as well as the entire agrarian economy in this country. It calls for local solutions to the problems of inequitable land distribution, as well as the skewed monopolized agrarian value chain. You need no reminder of where we come from. And equally, you need no reminder of the monumental failures of your post-1994 establishment to return land back to the people. You need no reminder of the fact that the agrarian economy is dominated by monopolies across the value chain and that these purposefully close off any opportunity for meaningful engagement by Africans. You need not to be reminded that your land restitution program in particular has been a painful failure. It promised people whose memories of this possession were still vividly clear that they were going to get their land back. So many have died without ever realizing this dream because today, you still have not settled all the land claims lodged before 1998. And of the budget items of this department, so it fit to cut the restitution budget far more than any of your line items. Those who got the land through any of your programs have been frustrated by your absolute neglect, no post-settlement post support, and your deliberate encouragement of intra-community conflicts. The Babanango land claim in KZ10 are one such community, as are the Ndabeni land claims in Cape Town. They are examples of how your injudicious interference in community affairs has led to a complete collapse of community agency and the death of dreams of land repossession. These are communities that will suffer the most from this adjusted budget because you will not have, you will now have the tools not to do even the barest minimum of what is expected from you. While the department may have run out of solutions, there are solutions apparently around which we can sponsor. One, we need to fast track the amendment of section 25 of the constitution to take the land of our people back from invaders and settlers without compensation and give it back to the rightful owners. As the deputy president of the EFF, Commissar Fred Subambu said, the Sunday Independent, that I quote, a piece by piece land repossession and expropriation will delay the historical, political, and economic and social justice program of land reform. Close quote. We have, through superior logic, repeatedly stated in this parliament what should be done. South Africans and the world as a whole know our position, which is not repeating. Two, we need to create watertight mechanism to ensure that the land does not fall on the hands of Latonia's politicians of the ruling elite, whose insatiable desire of self-enrichment knows no bounds. We need to use this opportunity to promote a massive program of food production across the country, favoring small-scale farmers, women, and youth-led farming enterprises. We need to build and support fresh produce markets in each municipality for access by small-scale food producers with a minimum of 50% access by women and the youth. We need to establish and capitalize agricultural development nodes in each of the nine provinces to increase the quantity and quality of agricultural production. We need to restructure the land bank into a broad-based agricultural developmental bank with a clear mandate to support emerging black farmers, including those farming in communally owned land. We need to subdiv subdivide agricultural land and ensure that our new vision for agra agrarian reform is premised on the sound and viable principle of promoting smallholder agriculture. Only these interventions can ensure that we emerge out of COVID-19 with a vibrant, restructured, and productive agricultural sector driven in the main by Black people. This adjusted budget lacks the, requ the requisite imagination to take the country out of the pit 
it is in now. And therefore, we reject this budget, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amanda! Amanda! The next speaker is from the IFP, the Honorable Sabeku. Thank you, uh, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister, Honorable Deputy Ministers, and all members of the, of, of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, Chairperson, the IFP would like to first state that uh, we support the, 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 the adjustment budget. Chairperson, it is well and, uh, it, it is well and, and good to have long-term vision of uh, integrated economic growth in the agricultural sector unless we can seriously address the current uh, realities of poor management of the farms gained in the process of land distribution and redistribution. Redistributed farms, Chairperson, that were once productive uh, are, 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 are currently uh, uh, have become the, the playground for uh, the, the, the trustees that are uh, 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 um, looting uh, the resources, leaving behind the beneficiaries who, who should have been uh, part of uh, uh, the benefit in the, in the farms. Even some officials and politicians have sunk uh, their fingers into the so-called game. Yet, what current uh, administration fails to, to, to realize is that uh, the agricultural sector is the foundation, is the foundational uh, support to the nation's food security and economy. Without a growing agricultural sector, our nation will, will starve. We will not be major role players in the one-third world GDP that this uh, sector holds. The massive sectoral uh, participation in the world's uh, GDP directly means that uh, there is an abundant need for this sector, for this sector's uh, expansion uh, resulting in jobs in jobs and uh, growing economy. The added uh, advantage of this sector, it is, uh, 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 sorry, the, the added um, advantage to this sector is appealing to all South Africans from rich uh, to poor, as they can all find a space in the value chain. The National Development Plan envisions that uh, by 2020, agriculture will create close to a million uh, jobs, whilst the commitment of 500,000 uh, jobs during uh, the Zuma uh, uh, term, term of office was made. We, in fact, uh, lost a million uh, uh, jobs. We are deeply concerned that uh, the downward uh, budget adjustment will affect both food security and our nation and that of jobs in this sector. Government has certainly missed the opportunity to reprioritize agriculture as a massive contributing factor in growing our economy. Additional budget for this sector could have uh, gone to creating jobs in, this, in the agricultural sector, in health and safety, to ensure that uh, our produce is fit for consumption nationally and internationally. Communal land has been identified as an, an area uh, that needs to be uh, attended to. But instead, one hears one home, one garden, or one home, one hectare. When looking at, at the number of uh, years that uh, this song has been sung, very little can be identified as a, a manifestation of uh, a manifestation or result thereof. As with this, um, the uh, as with the above, this program cannot uh, work if only an investment in is made into the materials and not uh, building the, the the proper human capital and the most obvious of these shortcomings in experience in uh, provinces like the Free State uh, and and and, and um, Limpopo. Chairperson, thank as you. As state. Thank you, Honourable Member. Thank you. Albongwe, Kamale IFP. Thank you, Honourable Member Tabekulu. Uh, the next speaker is from the FF Plus, the Honourable Chief Briet. Forward. Many are brief and 
dankie, dankie voorzitter, ek is hier. Wow, voorzitter, ons is een groot moeilijkheid. Landbouw is een groot moeilijkheid. En as ons onthou wat gedurende hard lockdown gebeur het, en ons kyk na wat tans gebeur, en die aandagsbegroting in acht neem, dan weet ons, ons is een groot moeilijkheid. En so kan dit nie aangaan nie. En die selfde asem as wat die departement sê, dat program 3, wat voedselsekuriteit en bijstand aan boere um, te maak het, is die belangrijkste van hulle programme, snij hulle ook daar die begroting met so wat 1,8 miljard rand. As die aansierregering werkelijk belang gestel het in die opheffing van opkomende boere en commerciële boere, en werkelijk belang gestel het in voedselsekuriteit oorhoofs, maar ook per huishouding, sy wil nie daar die fondse gesnoe het nie. Die grootste probleem is nie nie die ontoereikende begroting nie, en selfs nie die verkeerde prioritisering te midde een pandemie nie. Dit is die ongeergdheid van die departement en die regering met landbouw in sy geheel wat die probleem is. Die departement is ongeerg oor die ondersteuning en bijstand van landbouw, want indien al daar ernstig was, sy so ons daadwerkelijke stappe gesien het om een oplossing in termen van befondsing vir boere daar te stel. Ons sou gesien het dat die departement saam met Tessauri een plan vir die landbank krij, of selfs in plaas van kerm oor die landbank, wat nie aan die behoeftes van beide klein en commerciële boere voldoen nie, weer iets soos die landbouwkredietkoraad tot stand bring. Maar hulle is ongeerg oor sikke voor, vooruitgang. Die departement is ongeerg oor die toekomst van Zuid-Afrika as die droogte geteisterde gebied en die regering is ongeerg oor die huidige droogte. Want as die regering en die departement ernstig was hier zou ons niet tot 4 maart gewag het vir die minister van samenwerkende regering om die land tot die droogte ramgebied te verklaar nie. Sou ons nie onceremonieel dier die adjunct DG van die Nationale Rampbestuurscentrum ingelig gewees het dat hier die droogte ramgebied opgeskort is nie. En sou die departement nie net gepraat het nie, maar al reeds een plan van actie gehad het om boere in ons voortslepende droogtes bij te staan. Maar die departement en die regering is ongeerg oor voedselsekuriteit. Voorzitter, ons kan nie langer bekostig dat voedselsekuriteit in ons landbouwers net lippetaal van die regering geniet nie. Want lippetaal gaan nie ons huidige krisis aanspreek nie. Verlede week gedurende die presidentiële in Bezo, het die president weer eens gesê, dat plaas aanvallen en moorde nie anders as enige ander misdaad of moord is nie. Ach, waar minister, jy moet vir die president sê dat hy verkeerd is, want plaas aanvallen en moord is wel anders. In die 5 plus vraag weer eens. Klassificeer plaas aanvallen en moorde tot de prioriteitsmisdaad. Ach, waar minister, Hoekom is dit vir u so moeilik om plaasaanvalle te veroordeel? Elke plaasaanval bedreig nie net voedselsekuriteit nie, maar die werksverliese tot gevolg. Die staat kan miljarde rande aan maatskapelike toelaas bestee om vir die armes, um, te, dat die armes kan oorleef, maar as daar nie kost is om van te oorleef nie, hoe dan gemaakt? Met al die foke faktore waarmee ons landbouwers op een dagelijkse basis geconfronteerd word, moes hulle nog te midde een pandemie en sy draconiese regulaties worstel om kos op elke Zuid-Afrikanerse etenstafel te sit en door die ekonomie by te dra. Die tyd het aangebreek vir die ANC om ernst te raag oor randbouw, dat jylle voorstelle en bekommernisse van oppositiepartijen begin ernstig opneem. Ek onthou specifiek my bekommernis oor vier veilings en die wettigheid daarvan gedurende vlak 5 en ek is afgemaak as belachelik en in minder as een week daarna draai dit uit om een werkelijke probleem te wees, as die departement maar net ernstig was. Aan elke boer in Zuid-Afrika, bestaans, kleinskool, opkomend en commercieel, wil die vijf plus sê, dankie vir jou onbatsichtige bijdra tot hierdie land. Honorable Baie minister, for you, you be serious about yes. agriculture. Thank you. Waar waar. Thank you very much. Waar waar. Waar waar. Waar waar. Waar The next speaker is the Deputy Minister, Honorable the Deputy Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, the Honorable Sibaluku Mzovu. Happy to see you. Back. Honorable the Deputy Minister, you on the platform. The Honorable Minister, Lamini. 
Deputy Minister. And that is Mboni Nigeria, Deputy Minister. He's struggling to unmute, Chairperson. Uh, his mic is still muted. Wow. I got coffers with Deputy Minister. I, yeah, Laisa Dogi Bov. Wow. I am no, sure. We can hear you. Yeah. We can okay, hear yeah. you. Yeah, we can okay. hear you. Okay, okay, Honorable Deputy Minister, you can, you can, you can go ahead. You can, yeah. Still muted. Lama Lama are wasting our time. I will come back. I will come back. I will come back to you. Yeah, it's now on It's now on chairperson. Uh, Honorable Stromo Zamini, are you there? Thank you, Chairperson, and my apologies for this inconvenience. Ah, and, yes, uh, well, I, hope, I hope I will buy time properly. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge you, Chair. I acknowledge you my minister. Honorable members, please mute your, your mic. The controller unless he's using an iPhone. Honorable <laughs> members, please oh, okay. mute your mics. We can hear you. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you very person. much. We are in, indeed uh, meeting at a critical time of COVID, and colleagues have spoken about that. Uh, also, at a time where we're supposed to continue to uh, not rely on big terms and exaggerated uh, positions, what, mm -hmm. what is required right now is that people expect us to deliver. We want to see an interconnectedness between commercial farming substance and farming local business, including these chain stores in the farm. We want to ensure an interlink between agriculture, manufacturing, uh, processing, including uh, construction. These are the few things, Chair, that we, 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 we mentioned that has caused us to say there is a need for the review uh, of the budget due to this uh, COVID-19. But in the department, uh, the work was started before us by the previous administration or the previous leadership of the department, uh, where we are need to to, 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 to make into life what uh, our president uh, prescribed on the district development model in the rural development plans. Our strategic objectives remain that of taking forward the work of the establishing of the agri parks of our strategic, strategic point uh, of departure towards uh, this objective. The support generally provided through a functional farmer production support units, including machinization equipment, management, mentoring uh, production, through skills development, which we'll touch on shortly because we need our youth uh, in that space. At the moment, we are putting establishment or the infrastructure that must support a, a 15 farmer production uh, support units, which must be provided within the necessary time. As a department, we have uh, crafted a comprehensive land and agrarian strategy, which focuses on developing commodity corridors. We touch on a, another specific matter on wool production which uh, we cited as a critical area uh, we, 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 we're doing work on. And uh, the, 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 the National Wood Growers Association, which we are supporting, which has uh, a responsibility over 40,000 wool producing small farmers. Uh, South Africa produces 50 million kilograms of 
of wool annually, and 30%, 13% of that is produced by rural uh, village farmers. Based on the latest uh, figures of 2019 and 2020, which we have received from our strategic partner, the National Wool Growers, uh, I want to, at this point, uh, pay a tribute and, and thank those who received prizes. Bongolwe Tumkedezi, who received the first prize. Maeze Geshweni, who received the second prize. Bonile Habela, who was on the third uh, stage. I want to touch on another point that is critical, the God Agribusiness Program. By the end of next year, the Department Cooperative Agriculture with two organizations in God Agri Business Program, which include Ndugachan and Haifa, Southern Africa, in Wazulu Natal, would have attained the goal of reaching and including okay. around 7,000 rural sub subsistence household in improved uh, gold production. Another area that is critical also on, 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 on our youth is to be able to increase rural gold production and to commercialize rural gold's head. By the end of 2020, 2021, we shall have increased the number of youth macro businesses by or to 700. Another area that is also uh, critical, uh, we shall add another 12 rural village-based custom feedlots to the 19 we have uh, completed in the last two years. The farmers' own cooperatives are governing and co-managing the custom feedlots with the uh, agricultural graduates who are employing uh, in support of national red meat. 29 auctions we are planning this year will take place uh, even then take us closer to the goal of financial sustainability. Our leading farmer production support unit so far is the Macolon FSPU, FPSU in the Free State, uh, where in Tabu Mafutsanyana district, we have supported over 58 rural village farmers and land reform beneficiaries. The National Rural Youth Service uh, Corps, which is another critical area I want to end with, because we believe that it is inevitable and strategic to place young people as strategic role players in rural development work if we are to succeed. We want their endless energy we want their endless ideas, their dream to come with us. We want them to work uh, with us to the future where we can actualize rural development. Our strategic point of departure, Chairperson, is skills development, which we see as the bedrock of our rural productivity. As of today, a total of 12,862 youth since 2010 have been certified or graduated in skills development programs uh, across. Currently, there is a total of about 1,464 youth participating in various skills development programs across our nine provinces. These areas, uh, Jefferson, uh, caused us to succumb and, 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 and realize that if we need uh, to succeed in this thing, the budgeting process needed to uh, accommodate these things. But Thank you very still, much, Honorable. Thanks very much, Chair. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. As I call the Honorable Thring from the SATP, I will hand over after after him. I'll hand over to the Honourable Chanji. Thank you, Honourable Thring. Can go ahead. Honourable House Chair, when the ACDP interrogates the mandate of this department, which is to provide equitable access to land, integrated rural development, sustainable agriculture, and food security for all, we can come to no other conclusion 
than to say that the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development has failed the citizens of South Africa. The lockdown has seen the department suspending some of its targets for 2020-21. These include activities which are critical for land acquisition and redistribution, agricultural production, food security, farmer support and capacity development, agricultural and rural development, as well as rural enterprise development. This budget is re reduced from 16.8 billion to 14.4 billion, an overall reduction of 2.4 billion. Of great concern to the ACDP is the 258.1 million reduction for household food, food security. Rural development sees a 199.8 million reduction, and there's a 134.92 million reduction in economic development, trade, and marketing. This supplementary budget indicates that of the 2.4 billion suspended from the vote, 913 million was shifted to COVID-19 purposes within the vote. In the light of the negative social impacts that the lockdown has had on individuals, it is concerning to the ACDP that money was taken from programs that are meant to assist small scale farmers and households with no tangible benefits seen in many hospitals in particular, and particularly those in the Eastern Cape where patients have had to fight for oxygen, wastewater runs in the corridors, and rats drink the blood of patients that has spilled into the drains. A coronavirus mobile survey published by 30 researchers from five South African universities just last week indicated that in April, 3 million people lost their jobs, with the indigent and the impoverished bearing the brunt. Of those interviewed, 47 reported that their households ran out of money to buy food in April 2020. The Cram Wave Survey shows that 7% of the respondents reported that someone in their household went hungry almost every day, or every day for the last seven days, representing some 2.2 million individuals in South Africa. Honorable House Chair, it is time to put away failed racially based policies which erodes social cohesion in South Africa. It is time to denounce and respond decisively to the farm murders of all race groups, which threatens our food security, and give much needed thanks and attention to all farmers who put food on our tables. It is time to unite, to build, and to grow our economy, and in particular, our agricultural sector. The ACDP is prepared for such a challenge. I thank you as we declare that we will not support this budget vote. Thank you, House Chair. I now proceed to the UDM. The UDM is not in the House. I now proceed to Honorable Tretti of the ANC. Honorable B. Tretti. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Chairperson, consistent with the Freedom Charter and 1992 Ready to Govern Policy Guidelines, the A and the ANC 2019 Election Manifesto committed, committed us to carry out sustainable land reform program that expands participation, ownership of agricultural production, and advances food security, whilst addressing persisting reality of apartheid special separation. From the triple challenges of the outbreak of this global pandemic has not made our task easier. As a matter of fact, the socio-economic challenges that our country is faced with have been multiplied, manifold, and the structural socio-economic inequalities found in our democratic society have been laid bare for all to see. The manner in which the National Command Council on COVID-19 under the leadership of President Cyril Ramaphosa has responded to the current dynamic. This is in light of the current fiscal consultation and the recent downgrading of our economy to a junk status. The evils of apartheid stewed spatial planning and development patterns are laid bare by the outbreak of this global pandemic. Despite notable efforts the ANC government has made since the advent of democracy, the need for land became immediate when our people had to adhere to a call made by the state president 
to stay at home and comply with the national lockdown rules. In welcoming this special adjustment budget vote, we would like to reiterate, to reiterate the ANC commitment to redressing the historical injustice of land dispossession. Land reform remains a critical component of our radical social economic transformation. On one of the reasons why we raise in support of this budget vote, besides our high comprehensive of threats posed by this global pandemic, is, is the acknowledgement that little has changed in the revised land reform target for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. The release of state-owned land will be released and continued as planned and about 300,000 hectares of state-owned land with claims on it will be distributed to payment. This global disaster has offered government an opportunity to transform our trade special development patterns by building communities that are closer to workplaces, schools, clinics, and shopping malls. Honorable Chair, this budget supports the empowerment of women, youth, children living with disability, and focus will be put on them in, in redistributing back the land. The release of state land for residential and commercial, on commercial use purposes will not be affected. We are and we are satisfied that the budget will help address land hunger, land hunger and afford our people with secure residential land use. In this financial year, the department has indicated to us that they plan to finalize about 244 land claims. This is very much welcomed progress in ensuring that land is indeed returned to ownership of our landless majority. We have noticed a need to speedily address domination of agricultural inputs by big agricultural business, as well as its domination of the agricultural value chain market. This continued domination by the few big corporations in the agricultural sector works against the ANC policy of transforming the structural patterns of our economy. Participation of the smallholder producers within the sector remains of utmost importance in the, transform in the transformation of the agricultural sector. We are pleased to learn and to take notice of the great efforts made by the department in extending support to our farmers under the, the COVID-19 Agricultural Disaster Support Fund. The outbreak of this pandemic has indicated to us the agency of food security. And in this regard, we would like to reiterate the importance of community food-based gardens in elevating hunger and poverty. The budget adjustment have not affected programs meant to support communal property associations, like emerging farmers, as well as commercial farmers support programs. Climate change will remain a challenge, and this budget vote will support our smallholder producers to deal and cope with effects of the devastating impact on their agricultural product. This kind of support is welcome, as it will not only help sustain these smallholder producers, but through research conducted by the Agricultural Research Council, it helps to develop drought-resistant seed variants. In conclusion, Honorable Chair, the ANC, unlike the EFF, will not promote land grabs, even in the face of this of, of, of COVID-19 pandemic. We will not have while we are taking while they are taking part. Like, so, okay. What we will do as ANC Parliament is to ensure some of the rule of law over energy and the rain. In supporting this adjustment budget, the National Freedom Party wants to highlight a few things. Now, first of all, Chair, we must admit that even all other countries worldwide have a similar problem than South Africa has currently. None of them anticipated uh, the impact of COVID-19. Now, the question is, if you do not have the money and you have to deal with emergencies like the health sector and others, you, where do you get the money from? You have to reprioritize. And it is for that reason a decision was taken to reduce the budget in certain departments. Now, I mean, this is happening all over the world. 
Now, what I don't see, Chairperson, is anyone giving an alternative to these reduction in budgets. And so I have a problem in, 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 in terms of that. Now, this department, Chairperson, is a very uh, important department. And let me tell you why. It deals with very sensitive issues. The issue of agriculture, which previously has been particularly in the hands of a few. It deals with land reform, and we know what happened pre-1994 and how the land was taken away from our people. And then we're talking about rural development where we want to keep improve the lives of our people, particularly. So they deal with very, very sensitive issues. And now when you talk about budget cuts, particularly when you're dealing with household food security and land reform, there is a concern that the processes, particularly of restitution of lands, paying out of land claims, will be affected. But what we want to encourage the department to do is to try and encourage rural development and, and, and creating more small-scale farming them to identify those people, particularly in rural areas, that, and rather than chair them all wanting to move and migrate to the urban areas, but to try and make these rural towns into more semi-urban towns, enhancing agriculture in those particular areas, identifying people to create, because this particular department would be able to play a pivotal role in creating jobs not uh, and, and production in South Africa, not just for local consumption, but also for export. So we believe that, and particularly if you look at the issue of the koi and sand, which has been a matter for a long time, Jim, we want the department to accelerate its process of land redistribution, uh, dealing with the land claims, enhancing the agriculture. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a thank you, ma'am. I now call upon the Deputy Minister, Honorable Squatcher. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister Titiza, Honorable <laughs> Deputy Minister, ladies and gentlemen, members of Parliament. I'm delivering this speech in honor of all people who lost their lives due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many are still recovering from the disease and we wish them a speedy recovery. We convey profound messages of condolence to those who have been, who have, whose next of kin have died because of the pandemic. We are though debating during the month of July that is internationally recognized as a tribute to our beloved former head of state, Ubabu Nelson Mandela. Poignantly last week on Friday, his youngest, daughter Zinzi was laid to rest. As we battle the challenges of COVID-19, we should take solace from the words of President Mandela and I quote him. Everyone can rise above their circumstances and achieve success if they are dedicated and passionate about what they do. This message is crystal clear. We should not give up. Instead, we should double our collective efforts to deliver meaningful services to improve the lives of the people, especially the previously disadvantaged communities. As part of the new normal, we have to reorganize, to reorganize the delivery targets in our APP to suit the constraints of the radically revised special budget adjustments that was delivered by honorable Minister Mboweni in June. We though are still committed to implement effective land administration and land redistribution, notwithstanding the budget cuts. We have tried our utmost not to compromise the quality of our essential services. Land redistribution is a non-negotiable. It is in that regard that we excitedly awaiting parliament to finalize the issue of expropriation of land without, <clears throat> without compensation. On land, on the restitution of land rights, land dispossession remains one of the most painful reminders of the legacy of the oppressive apartheid era. One of the legislative instruments introduced by this democratic government to eradicate this unjust situation is the Restitution of Land Rights Act number 22 of 1994. 
this act seeks to compensate people who lost their rights due to their previously racial discriminatory laws. Our government has made progress to compensate people who lodged their claims by December 1998. But we are mindful of the fact that many claims are still outstanding. The Commission on Land Restitution of Land Rights, the budget is 3028.515 after it was reduced by 403 million. In the short term, we have revised the targets on settlement of land claims. The focus is more on claims that have already been researched and ready for settlement. To this end, provincial targets of the number of land claims to be settled have been decreased from 454 to 244. And the number of land claims to be finalized has gone down from 479 to 295. We are still aiming very high, Honorable Chairperson. To maximize the rendering of its services during these trying times, the Commission has revised the criteria to enable the settlement of remaining restitution claims in the most sustainable and affordable manner. It will also use Section 6.2D of the Restitution Act to ensure priorities given to claims which affect a substantial number of persons who have suffered substantial losses because of the disposition of persons with particular needs. Our officials have been hard at work, even though they could not, because of the regulations, reach some sites for research and verification purposes, but they soldiered on. We are aware of the challenges in land reform that are experienced by the communal property associations. These conflicts have had a negative effect in the effective delivery of the land reform initiatives. With the limited budget, we continue to ensure that CPAs are capacitated, skilled, and supported so that they can operate effectively on the land allocated to them. Currently, more than 1,500 CPAs have been established nationally. We plan to support 477 CPAs so that they should be able to deliver on their mandates. Honorable members, Land redistribution and tenure reform is one of the core branches beheading the process of correcting the injustices caused by land dispossession of the past. The land, this, this particular unit caters for the acquisition of land for various purposes and the allocation of properties to deserving land reform beneficiaries. The land allocation process prioritizes women, youth, persons with disabilities, and this is consciously aimed at protecting vulnerable groups and increasing their participation in the agricultural sector. In the 2019-20 financial year, the department acquired 77,000 hectares of land for agricultural purposes. This included land for livestock grazing, crop production, and horticulture. We were hopeful to continue in this trajectory as we empower our communities. Of course, conditions win that mean that we will not be able to maximize as we would have wished. The department has also planned to acquire 50,000 hectares of land, but due to the budget cuts, it will acquire 23,000 hectares. On Trankra, we also had to revise downwards the targets in respect of these interventions. With respect to land development support, the department planned to support 200 plus farms with both agricultural infrastructure and production inputs. But the target has been readjusted downward from 200 to 146 because of conditions known by all of us. The department will only honor commitments in both land acquisition and land development, development support programs. Under household budgets, the funds to finance food security and other related projects, the whole 258 million per budget was rendered was was surrendered to cater for the budget cuts sadly this means that we will have a shortfall here but not all is gloomy honorable mem members it will be amiss not to dwell a bit on labor tenants and the efforts that we have undertaken which go a long a long way to improve the lives of some of these neediest groups the budget for the acquisition of land for labor tenants is not affected as there is a court order on this matter also. 
We plan to settle 500 labor tenants claims and acquire 947 hectares of land for labor tenants and farm dwellers. We're in the process of strengthening the implementation of the Land Tenants Act number three to safeguard the interests of this vulnerable group. To this end, a special master has been appointed in December 2019 to monitor the implementation of the court order supporting labor tenants to ensure the smooth functioning of the office of the special master. Our minister piloted that we must budget not less than 27 million for this. Thank in you. In conclusion, we also want to pay tribute yes, to Golden Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Minister, why was the special master appointed? Honorable Chai, you are now given a chance to answer that. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Chairperson. Go ahead. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Chaisa, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, let me start off by agreeing with Mr. Honorable Stein on the issue of Mr. Vianne Zikana. Actually, Mr. Vianne Zikana is coming from Matiatel, and I know the story. I was also trying to assist and support him. You cannot imagine what a person, a small scale farmer, an emerging farmer to be deprived of the farmer that he's running. And he was forced to sell his livestock. He goes here to get money to go to court and challenge the department on this issue. That cannot be correct. And the chairperson was just spelling a rat in the whole issue because these officials from the department now are just doing this purposes in order to support their friends or cronies. So I, I would like to plead with the minister to intervene so that Mr. Zgana now can be assisted in this matter. Thank you very much. Chairperson, the Department of, Africa, of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development is one of the departments we always think should be given more funds in terms of the budget. We are aware of the COVID-19 pandemic challenges. However, these people on the field of agriculture have been active amid this pandemic. The agricultural sector in particular is contributing a lot to our GDP. So they need a sort of motivation. Of course, Chairperson, no department has escaped this budget cut. Though it should be, have been very little limited for this particular department because it's contributing a lot to our economy. Chairperson, the agricultural, the comprehensive agricultural support program that is cut has also suffered under these difficult conditions posed by this COVID-19 pandemic. Most of the emerging farmers or small scale farmers have, benefit, have been benefiting from this program. But now it's not possible. Of course, they will benefit now, but it will not be as they were doing before. If these farmers can be supplied, Chairperson, with all the equipment and water licenses, we can see good progress in terms of production. Our agricultural sector has got a potential of creating more jobs, thus contributing to the fight against unemployment and poverty the great challenges that are facing our country, more especially during this time of COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Chairperson, we think that monitoring and follow-up should be made on the great project and the final assistance. Honorable Chairperson. Okay, Chairperson, we support this budget. Thank you very much. I now recognize group not in the house. The PAC is recognized. PAC not in the house. Honorable Hendrix Aljama. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. 
Honorable Chair, uh, I would like to thank the Minister for a very uh, inspiring observation that in spite of the budget cuts, the department will be able to achieve what the nation wants them to achieve. I also uh, want to thank uh, the Honorable Member Sweaty for uh, confirming that help will be given to people with disabilities. And I think it's very important that this department focuses on people with disabilities because they have shown whenever given the chance, they rise to the occasion. And I'm referring to the 10 factories that the Department of Labor has established where they produce uh, SAB standard uh, goods. Similarly, in, uh, in agriculture, I feel that uh, more help must be given to people with disabilities. The produce that they are going to uh, produce, the price must be guaranteed up front. They must be given all the uh, necessary assistance. And if anything goes wrong because of drought and so on, there must be guarantees. So that when they start planting a seed, honorable chair, that eventually it, uh, it translates into a ram or two for them. Honorable Chair, it's important that the Department of Agriculture realizes that the nation depends on them to create hundreds and thousands of jobs. And they have to work very closely with the Small Business Development Department. I'm a member of that portfolio committee and also with social welfare. That triangle uh, will help because the Department of Social Welfare can buy the produce at a guaranteed price. The small business development can provide hybrid finance grants and loans at no interest rates. And obviously the expertise of the Department of Agriculture can, very, can play a very important role. We've heard about the fears of farmers being killed and maybe we must start considering a standby force to give them some peace of mind. Honorable Chair, uh, I'm very hopeful that, the, that this particular department is going to live up to the challenges that the nation uh, expects from them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Hendricks. Uh, Honorable Mbabana, the DA. Mbabana. Mbabana. Chair person, I am very angry. What kind of government is this that fails to protect its citizens? The ANC government is failing to protect our children it is failing to protect our women, our elders, our minors, and now it is failing to protect our farmers. 21 years ago, the Kumalo family's joy at finally owning Berflay Farm in Emsefort Mpumalanga was short-lived when their father, who had been a labor tenant on the farm for 25 years, was brutally murdered with pangas. The case has tragically not being solved to date. Farm attacks and murders have since escalated at a rapid pace, with the perpetrators becoming more and more brutal. On Saturday, July 4, 2020, on a farm in Winan KZN, Zakia Ismail, a 26-year-old mother of two, who was pregnant with a third baby, had her throat slit in front of her children for apparently no reason. Western Cape Tulba community doctor, Rulof Gwerda, sustained multiple fatal stab wounds on his farm on Monday, the 1st of June, 2020. These are but two examples out of the 12 horrendous farm murders since the 1st of April, 2020. The vicious torture which accompanies these farm murders has no color, it has no gender, and it has no age group. The question is, why is this government, and specifically the president, seemingly in denial about these heinous crimes? Why are for murders which affect both workers and the owners not classified as priority crimes and given the focused attention that is needed? Chapter 6 of the National Development Plan cites agriculture as one of the drivers of the rural economy with the potential to create 1 million jobs by 2030. How will this be possible with the farming community under siege and not receiving the protection that it deserves? 
the newly emerged Department of Agriculture and Land Reform and Rural Development under Minister Togo Didiza must stop navel gazing and lead the charge in calling for protection of our farming communities. What is the point of having a vision which includes improving food security and safety when there is no robust strategic plan to ensure that this and the rest of the vision actually happens? To the farming community out there, rest assured that the Democratic Alliance stands by you on Stan Bay E. The DA will, when called for, report farm attacks as hate crimes. We will have dedicated DA counselors or activists tracking investigations and court proceedings related to um, all farm attacks and um, report back to the farming community. The DA will work with the agricultural unions and do oversight on farm patrols, assisting them to be organized and formalized. The DA will continue to drive land ownership and the financial support of emerging farmers in order to foster increasing agricultural contribution to the um, economy. The DA will work for an improved SAPS farmer relationships in terms of firearm licenses, firearm training, farm patrols, and perpetrator apprehension in all areas. The DA will continue to push for the establishment of fully, um, fully uh, outfitted specialized units dedicating to promoting, sorry, to protecting our rural communities. The DA will ask that the investigative capacity at rural SAP stations be increased. We will request that SAPS recategorizes rural attacks as priority crimes. And last but not least, the DA will continue to fight the amendment to section 25 of the, of the constitution that will allow without compensation. Thank you. Honorable Klape from the African National Congress, you are now recognized. Thanks, uh, Honorable Chairperson. In joining the ANC members, we have clearly articulated ANC policy objectives and the executive having outlined what their departmental plans are for this current financial year. I hereby rise to support this progressive budget vote 29. I would like to start by reflecting on the Freedom Charter on the question of land. The Congress of the People Chair declared 65 years ago that the restriction of land ownership on racial basis shall be ended and all the land be divided among those who work in, on it in order to banish famine and hunger and that the state shall help the peasants with implements, seed, tractors and dams to save the soil and assist the tillers. The Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development is doing exactly what the Freedom Charter promised our people in 1955 and we're making progress as a nation. Honorable members, we acknowledge and welcome this budget cards given the need to reprioritize certain government programs and suspend certain projects in order to allow for the state to deal with the deadly impact of COVID-19 pandemic. The enemy has finally hit home. So no funds have been lost, Honorable Thring from ACDP. They have just been reprioritized to fund other national disaster-related programs in fighting this pandemic. It is called reprioritization and refocusing, as indicated by Honorable Mandela. The mandate of the department has not changed, including its key departmental programs that speaks to the seven government priorities and the department remains on course during this fiscal turbulence. Honorable Chairperson, the growth of agricultural sector heavily relies on the expansion of agriculture, value chain and supply chain markets. And we affirm that the new district development model will help in the realization of this expansion, particularly through linking rural and urban markets and ultimately exposing our agricultural producers to market opportunities that will be presented by implementation of Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. The development of farmer register on the other hand, 
will enable the department to profile our farmers and by so doing, avail information to identify farmers that need support of any form. Honorable members, the ANC in 2020 January 8th statement mandated us to ensure that both rural and urban dwellers live in sustainable human settlements located to economic opportunities and social infrastructure. This pandemic has magnified all our eyes to see the harsh realities of landless suffered by the masses of our people. The release of state-owned land by the department to the landless citizens will help to eradicate these challenges and build the productive assets for our people. We welcome, Chair, the commitment by the department to settle the labor tenants' claims. We have certainly taken note of recent farm matters that have been on our country in the past months, and we urge law enforcement agencies to act swiftly on the acts of criminality. Honorable Mbabama, we have full confidence on our law in, uh, enforcement agencies. On with the mayor announcements made by President during the State of the Nation address, the establishment of the cannabis industry. We are pleased that there is work in progress towards realizing this goal. And we are looking forward for, to, the, to its economic contribution that it will make towards growing our economy and alleviating poverty, empowering and strengthening rural economies, and benefit vulnerable communities, especially women, youth, and people with disabilities. Honorable Chairperson, we applaud the department's intervention in drought relief and ask the department to do more to cover the broader spectrum of farmers in distress. Honorable members, it is through agricultural research that we are able as a country to find and develop, sustain our agricultural niche in SADC and in the African continent. It is therefore important to ensure that commendable work done by ARC, the Agricultural Research Council, reach our farming communities so that we become resilient to diseases, pests, and natural disasters affecting the agri sector. And we need to, uh, to effectively align the research output to our national development agenda. Women are the backbone of our economy, and over the years, they have provided a critical support to economy activism necessary for sustenance of our economy. The allocation of state-owned land, as previously indicated, must benefit women, and women participation in agriculture must be accelerated. Honorable members, the background history that is given here by Honorable State is an indication of where this department is coming from. This is the reason why the current reconfigured department in the sixth administration is reviewing all legislation related to communal land tenure. Let me also indicate, uh, indicate Chair, that all court orders have been complied with and the portfolio committee has received these reports. We have agreed with the department that the criteria set during COVID relief fund applications was too steep for smallholder farmers and for the subsistence farmers. The committee is briefed that the department is planning how to assist these farmers that could not qualify and everyone that will be left out in the farmer register. Honorable Spirit, we moan the food security budget. Minister has just briefed us last Wednesday, honorable members, that she is bringing the addenda because our cry over the budget on food security has found expression and Treasury has agreed to augment or top up this uh, uh, through this adjusted budget. Honorable Chairperson of the House, the ANC is building a non-racial, non-sexist and democratic South Africa that truly belongs to all who live in it. And budget vote 29 with its programs that we are supporting today seeks to address that. I thank you. Thank you, honorable member. I now invite- Mandla, Mandla. Order, order. Malibu. I now invite the Minister of Agriculture, um, Land Reform and Rural Development, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. As, as I close this debate, I want to start with a quote by our founding father of the nation, um, President Mandela, when he said, I quote, I'm fundamentally an optimist. Whether that comes from nature or nature, I cannot say. Part of being an optimist is keeping one's head 
pointed towards the sun, one's feet moving forward, close quote. In saying this, Chairperson, is that no matter the difficulties that we face today, we shall not waver from the commitment that we made to our people. We will remain with our heads pointed towards the sun and our feet moving forward. I wish to thank members for their contribution and particularly the Deputy Minister, Deputy Ministers for their hard work in ensuring that we do share the load that we have been confronted with in delivering land and agriculture to our people. The oversight and rigorous scrutiny by our portfolio committee has always ensured that we remain focused. There are issues that have been raised by the chairperson and other members which have actually ensured that we do address these issues. One of those is the budget on food security. And as Honorable Tape has just said, that we have received 688 million towards household food security. And in the discussion between the presidency and treasury, this should target 50,000 subsistence farmers, farmers in the prairie, urban and rural areas. There are other issues, Chairperson, that have been raised, such as the issue of rural safety. And Honorable Mbabama, as well as Honorable Stain and Honorable Brady know very well that last year, the Minister of, Fire, of Police actually launched a rural safety strategy in partnership with the farming sector in Limpompo. Looking at how specifically this matter can be addressed, targeting protection for our farmers, as well as our farm workers and rural communities. And we will never, we will not waver on this one, but we will remain focused and continue. I also want to say to Honorable Stain, actually she knows very well that last year, we have dealt with the issue of Mr. Rahati and we're continuing with his lawyers to address his issue. So there is no way that it can be said that this government is actually against working against the farmers. On the Zigana matter, which has just been raised by both Honorable Stain and Honorable Chaisa, indeed we will follow up on this matter. With regards to the COVID-19 beneficiaries, 133 officials who had made their applications were actually not supported because as we know, our beneficiary selection policy is very clear that those who are working for government and those who are public representatives until they leave office for a period of a year in respect to public representatives and two years in respect of officials cannot benefit from government support. And I also want to say it cannot be true for Honorable Briede to say that the way this government is working does not show its interest in supporting farmers. Actually during this COVID-19 and even before, we have been working very well with the farm sector of our country until yesterday, engaging on how we can give a range of support that farmers required. And I'm sure that wherever there are challenges, our farmers are able to speak for themselves and bring those matters for us to attend to. Honorable members of parliament also, in their own respect, they have raised issues from the farming community which we have addressed one of those on the issue of diesel raised last time by Honorable Stain, other matters which were raised by Honorable uh, Matthias on Mabanango. We are dealing with those issues. Deputy Minister is actually leading on how we resolve that matter of Mabanango. We've had a meeting during this uh, past week with the Minister of Environmental Affairs to ensure that we collectively address the challenge in Mabanango. So Honorable Members, I really would want to say it's important for all of us to work in partnership to ensure that we support the vision of this department and the work that collectively all of us have to do going forward. I thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Honorable Mali Member. Mongwe. Mali Mongwe, Mama. Thank you. Mali Mongwe. Of this uh, virtual mini plenary. The mini plenary is adjourned. Thank you. Well done. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.